you said check out chat gbt and so i signed up and i thought okay let's t- put this to the test i've seen some videos on it and it's people are going it's life-changing and i was like okay fine so i was mucking around with just chatting away with with chat gbt also it feels like you're having a conversation for starters it doesn't feel like you're going what do i need to do next to 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 change this character controller to fix the problem it literally does feel like you're working with someone that's giving you new input and it does feel like you're actually bouncing off someone and that's that's Mm. all good and well but when they integrate that sort of personality system into chat gpt will it replace like a work colleague sort of thing yeah it's yeah terrifying yeah very exciting at the same time ubisoft uh, reveals that three unannounced games cancelled skull and bones delayed again it's kind of normal for triple a studios really kind of yeah especially for a company that's got twenty thousand developers in it across like 40 different studios or whatever like how many studios ubisoft's got i don't know there's probably like 100 dudes on my floor just like watching porn all at once or something and i'm just here like that sounds fucking... like a great hotel room well, well you know <laughs> yeah that sounds like the place to be. You don't want to be on here with me. Go go check out that room with those guys. That's a good point, actually. All right, I'm leaving. I'll catch you later. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Peace. Good episode. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Polygon Forest. I am Ubisoft concept artist Vin Hill, and that's going to be an interesting point today, isn't it? But yeah, we'll 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 get into that. Um, I'm joined as ever by Christopher Jarvis. Hello. Who is also an indie developer. Sorry, I just yeah. completely screwed up that intro. But uh, yeah, this p- pertains to what I sort of do it in a job and stuff. So like, yeah, if if anyone's been keeping up with gaming news, then. Uh, my uh, place of work has definitely been in the headlines. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit, though. Yes. But uh, but first, how's it how's it going, sir? Um, how how is how is your week? Yeah, it's yeah, it's going really well. Um, uh, like uh, indie game stuff is coming along really well. Secret project mission stuff is going really well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um. I went to Manchester, just come back from Manchester, and I went to a cool gaming bar. Was it Pixel Pixel Bar? Oh. And had some like video gaming, uh, video gaming cocktails, and uh, played some Mario Party, and um, yeah, it was really good fun. Really had a good, really, really good night out in Manchester. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because those, so. yeah, those bars were they're they're all over the place in Japan. Like, and I remember one being in Osaka, like when I was living there, and we went there a couple of times. But when you showed me the pictures, like you were um, messaging me on Twitter, um, when you showed me the pictures, I was mm. like, man, that is like one for one what the Japanese bars look like because they're very much like that. They're kind of mm. just like small, like dinky places, which, you know, low lights and all that sort of stuff. Everyone's playing Mario Kart and like themed mm. drinks and all that sort of stuff. Sometimes themed food, which is great. But yeah, it, it looked really yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was good fun. I don't think there was any food, but I definitely could have had some like mario chicken wings or something or yoshi <laughs> wings i guess i don't know <laughs> whatever would be the best thing or like kirby burgers <laughs> i don't know that's dark isn't it jesus would that be gamey i, I yeah. would imagine that would be yeah. gamey yeah or it could be i reckon kirby would be a mixture of everything because it just eats everything so it could be uh, like a turkey twizzler uh people in the, in the uk would know what that means but I'd, outside i'd imagine outside. it's chewy uh, but how was your, <laughs> <way>. <laughs> how was your week? yeah not bad not yeah. bad it just um kind of uh in between places like headspace wise like physically as well like people that are sort of regulars to the podcast might notice my yeah. background is a little bit different um i'm between places at the moment um so just figuring out moves and all that sort of stuff but yeah other than that like it's just indie games coming along i worked on some dialogue stuff and if you are interested in in any of the indie game sort of updates from me or chris then you can go and check out it should be up by now anyway um you should go and check out the uh, most recent solo dev roundtable that we've done um we were also joined by uh, episode 10 episode 10 yeah we were joined as always by uh, sam webster um working on his game chaos island as well and we just sort of gave updates to everything that we're working on but yeah, I, I cracked it open again this morning, and I've been I've been chipping away through some stuff as well, mm. um, sort of refining uh, the current cutscene system that I've got. I wanted to get 
like the because the thing was happening where a, a cutscene would play and my character would like snap to a new position after the cutscene so i smoothed that out this morning and i fixed that so it feels a bit more mm. consistent and it actually like feels like it's connected and, and stuff like it isn't just like separate things happening which is good it's just those small You're getting that um yeah oh just getting that god of war um like single camera thing going on where everything's just in one camera uh, i'm not sure if i want to go that far it's kind of yeah okay. it, like i do want to keep it a bit because it's not needed is it no it's not really needed that much but i mean it's it's a cool thing if you can pull it off but i don't really i mean and i absolutely could especially in the type of game that i'm making um, because the camera just like moves to where it needs to be and then it moves back or whatever and i do do that um sort of camera move quite a bit but for the most part it's not it's not vital to the story or anything so it doesn't i don't think it keeps you in the moment or anything because you're not playing if you're playing in third person or something it makes sense but for the Mm -hmm. game that i'm Mm -hmm. working on it's it doesn't make as much sense to sort of keep it all in one shot but who knows like i'll see yeah it has a bigger impact in uh, third person doesn't it yeah so yeah good uh so yeah, there's been some hap- things happening at Ubisoft. Do you want to do Ubisoft or Naughty Dog? Work-life balance with Naughty Dog or <laughs> Ubisoft? It's not good either way, is it? It's gonna be it's gonna be one of those episodes. I apologize if you're listening to this and you like you just want to hear nice happy gaming news. Uh, we did a, some nice happy things. We did also want to talk about uh, Chat GPT at some point as well. Um, I'm not sure. Yes. If you want, do you want to cover that first actually and just get that out of the way because I know it sort of pertains to like the indie yeah. dev stuff and and things like that so it'll be a good thing to start off with. Yeah, so uh, I'm I'm working on Focus Fine but I'm also working on some other side projects here and there and um, you said check out ChatGBT and so I signed up and I thought okay let's t- put this to the test. I've seen some videos on it and it's people are going it's life changing. And I was like, okay, fine. I was quite skeptical. <laughs> and I started to, I was like, can you make me a character controller based on these two games? And I might as well just, actually, do I need, can I say what the games are? Okay, well, I'll say this. Uh, I wanted it to be similar to, one of, the, one of the aspects of the character controller to be similar to Tiny Wings. Mm. Um, however, uh, it got confused between Tiny Wings and Flappy Bird. So it was going, yeah, sure. This is the this is the thing. So it gave me it made a Flappy Bird um, character controller, and I was like, okay, well, that's great. That's not what I wanted. Can you like switch it so that instead of going up with a flap every time you press a button, can it like increase the gravity like in Tiny Wings? And they were like, yeah, sure. And it just managed to do that. And so I was mucking around with just chatting away with with ChatGPT. Also, it feels like you're having a conversation for starters. It doesn't feel like you're going. What do I need to do next to 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 change this character controller to fix the problem it literally does feel like you're working with someone that's giving you new input and it does feel like you're actually bouncing off someone because they're giving they're they're, they're giving their inspiration which is obviously like oh the internet that's been scoured and yeah i do uh, i do wonder if if that's the next step right like if they introduce some form of because we've obviously got like chat assistants like alexa and, and and siri and stuff like that um and that's that's all good and well but when they integrate that sort of personality system into chat gpt will it replace like a work colleague sort of thing um i'm not saying i don't think it's going to replace anyone i think it's going to um, just make no. it so you can it, like almost have like a, a co-developer with you at all times like even if you're working from home by yourself i think that's the sort of um the use for it because yeah. it is absolutely incredible like it's kind of mind-blowing like the sort of stuff yeah. that it can do and it was I was I was telling you in the pre-show it's not even like properly hooked up to the internet at the moment like it's all it's all based it's a language model it's not even based off like a data cell it is based off a data set but it's not actually currently connected into the internet as a whole like the data set that it's got is strictly yeah. based off language so that's why it's developed all this sort mm. of stuff and that's why I can figure it out especially in code and it makes sense right like if you ask it to write out some code mm. it's a language like it it's figuring that out for you but yeah, it's yeah. terrifying yeah. and very exciting at the same time. But the fact that the fact that it's got such knowledge of C sharp coding and uh, and even like change and even like editing editing changing things on the fly like can you make this in three D can you make this in two D and it will just edit what it's done to turn it into two D and it was practically flawless in terms of what it spat out mm. it would work. It, the difficulty was getting me to explain what I meant in more detail, and you have 
you know you have to give more detail over time but that's going to get better and better like because this is now you know in five years time it's going to be better if they keep working on it that is i, I don't even think it's going to be so five years, i was honestly shocked. i think it's going to be i think it's going to be, be like, next or six months uh, or so yeah i really do because I, I was looking uh, i came across like an image i don't even know if it was real um but it was a typical meme like going by on uh twitter or whatever but you saw like they had this is the data set for chat gpt3 and it's like a, it's basically a, a circle in the middle of your screen then next to it they had a circle that's like five times as big and this is chat pt4 or whatever that's what they're currently working on mm-hmm. it's like you imagine what they can do with that and it's sort of like yeah that's uh yeah <laughs> that's when the robots come you know what i mean like it's hard not to put the tinfoil hat on sometimes right but it's yeah it's it's yeah fascinating. But this is the thing. It's like it made the cool, amazing thing, but it still needed a person to be like, "This is fun. This is is this isn't fun," and and do that iterative editing process. So it can't get to the heart of what's fun straight away. At least with video games, and at least now, who how far away we are from that, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, we don't know to what end originality can be um, faked. So. I mean, what, uh, like, we'll the, see. I, I mean, I keep seeing this question. This is the thing that keeps coming back around to me. And I, as an artist, someone working in the games industry, I've got skin in this game, right? Like, we, we both mm. work on games. Um, so it's kind of mm. like we, we should be the people that are shouting to the rooftops of everyone else saying, hey, like, th- this isn't going to replace people because, like, it's not truly original. That's the sort of, that's the thing that I keep hearing over and over again. Like, it's not actually really original, so it's mm. not, you know, like, it's not really, it's never going to replace people because it's not truly original. And you have to kind of take a step yeah. back from that and think, okay, what makes a human original for the most part? Like, a lot of our inspirations and a lot of our sort of ideas come from other things around us, much like what Chat GPT is doing. It's yeah. just doing it a hell of a lot faster and a lot more almost to a fault efficiently like where it's kind of like okay you Mm. want something like this and it only like registers from stuff like that you can't it it's not great at pulling ideas from things outside of the orbit of stuff that it's actually currently like trying to think about but it's only a matter of time for that so figures that Mm. out but like if someone sits down to write a novel or something they're going to be they've got all this experience like from their life and all the books that they've read and 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 sort of other creators around them and they've they come up with this original idea based off what is sort of been inputted around them and what chat gpt is really doing is really no different it's just a matter of like how it accesses that data like it just needs to figure that out better and because it, it's hard yeah. it's hard to deny that you know while mid journey like yeah is literally pulling it's it's learning data sets from other eyes and stuff like that but it's only a matter of time before it, like it goes beyond that and it starts coming up with original content and that's that's i think that's sort of like on the horizon so to just ignore that and say like oh these ai bots can't have an original thought i mean that's sort of wrong in my opinion like i don't i don't really see how it's any different to what we do um it's just a hell of a lot more efficient to a fault like i said but it's only a matter of time i think but yeah yeah it's gonna be interesting but one thing's for sure like i five years ago i had an idea of how someone could be like a small business owner doing video games and working and like accessing libraries and buying assets and working with developers. And now I see a world where one person can utilize AI to streamline processes and uh, the t- the time in which you would need to employ another person is being pushed back. And so the money for smaller developers uh you know it seems like we might be getting a bit more of a correction as to things were before the end apocalypse mm. so like oh, with the end apocalypse and steam exploded and games were just getting on thousands of games going on there every day and indie developers that would release a game every few years used to be able to make a good living and now they suddenly they can't it seems like this ai thing is going to start bringing that back and it seems like there's gonna be a lot more opportunity for a couple of people to do a lot quickly um to sort of compensate for that development time that games take so it seems like it's going to save money time and resources it's not going to replace anything or anyone but it's not going to be like hey here's your um redundancy check because we've got a computer doing your job now it's not yeah it's not gonna be as simple as that it's gonna be black and white but 
it's definitely going to be we're all going to feel the benefit of it soon i think i think that's the point we're all going to feel the benefit of it soon because we're going to use the tools all of us are going to be using the tools um eventually and so we're all going to be feeling the benefits so it's going to be i think it's going to be a bit like sugared medicine i think it's going to it's going to be bittersweet like it's going to it's going to suck that jobs might not be as numerous as we thought five years ago yeah but everyone that's in the industry is going to feel the benefit i've certainly felt the benefit already i just need it to be working like i could have used it four or five more times and done loads of cool stuff but it's just in beta and it hasn't been working so i've been like nah, i'll do something else until it's working yeah <laughs> like something that doesn't need ai yeah it's it's, um, it's bizarre like, isn't it? like in admin. terms of how it changes our um our sort of work for the most part because you're absolutely right like i do agree like this is going to be a massive boon for um, solo developers or like small teams like that's these are the people that are going to benefit the most from this thing which is small teams that couldn't afford artists like literally like it's not it's not like they're using this instead of hiring artists because they they could not have hired artists anyway they just would have made a worse hire looking an artist because just the budget isn't there yeah yeah it, it would have just been I'm, a worse I'm, looking I'm game. like that focus fine I'm, I'm not an artist i was my art is a standard and i'm very humble i know where it stands in the world of video game art and now I have an opportunity for my art to appeal to a greater audience because I'm using a AI. And assisting you. Yeah. yeah. That's taking pictures. It's assisting me. It's a tool. And I have an artistic eye, but I just don't, I haven't put the man hours into getting to be good. And I might not have the temperament to be good. Yeah. I think um, you touched on something. There, so that though, is tricky. In terms of like how, how we have to sort of look at it from a mindset because it it's never, I don't think it's going to re- place indie developers that's for sure it could absolutely it could reduce the need for it's it's probably going to hurt like people uh, applying for jobs at double a studios the most because they're the ones that are sort of like they they're on a higher budget and they can hire people and now they're going to start using this stuff instead but thankfully like the double a market in the games industry and we're talking about it in the context of the games industry this is a video games podcast after all yeah. um double a games industry yeah. is really the only it, it's probably the smallest um, batch of developers out of everyone like from AAA to indie mm. like I would say the vast majority of them are in those two buckets and then the double A is a very small space in between them so it's not going to affect too many people but you're absolutely right in that when you are using it it needs that human um, sort of confirmation on the other side of it like you prompt it which you could probably replace after a while and say okay I'm working on this game take a look at it what do you think it needs and the chat's just like do this sort of thing but at the end of the day it's still it's still suggesting things to you and saying this is what i've come up with as an ai and you still have to say yes or no and it's going to become about that sort of almost like a director position it's more producer and director role yeah Yeah, exactly like the decision making will be done by the human and the legwork will be done by the robots instead yeah which you know which is kind of it's kind of correct, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, and I'm what, saying that that's... as an artist as well. Like, I know it sucks. Yeah, it does suck that our jobs are going to be reduced, or it's going, to, it's not going to reduce, or it, it probably becomes more competitive before it gets reduced. And then it gets reduced, and then it gets replaced, and we eventually become a Photoshop filter, which sucks. But it's the way of the world. This is what automation looks like. We've got to adapt and overcome, and sort of think about how we can um, figure out ways around it. Which you know, for some folks, it's not going to be easy. I, I understand that, but yeah, this is yeah. It's, we might it's have happening. we might have a, a, a map painting renaissance. We might have a, you know, uh, we might get just through hobbies and uh, fashion, mm. like cr- human created content might become fashionable. Like by proxy, like uh, art that looks like it wasn't generated by AI. Well, I mean, yeah, look at art. So maybe which imperfect. Was, and, um, Look at art that's in galleries right now, right? There's still people that paint with oils and there's still people that paint on easels yeah. and stuff like that and they put the beret on or whatever yeah. and get in a moody room, you know? Like, they still do that. Like, that's fine. Yeah. But the vast majority of the art which is being developed now is done digitally, like either through photography or if it's done through digital illustration, whatever, because it's just, like, in terms of commas and, and actually, like, trying to sell this sort of stuff, like, it's much more... Um, commercially viable to do it in digital it, it doesn't say it's not it has replaced a lot of like the traditional artists but they still exist and there's still going to be there's still going to be people that want to hand code stuff there's still going to be people that want to make 
like 3d objects and people that want still want to do the concept art from scratch and stuff like that and you know there's there's mm. always going to be room for them it's just the the bulk of the industry is probably just going to make this shift eventually and we've got to we've just got to accept it because no matter how much we fight against it and no matter how much we put like no ai like posters on art station and stuff mm. no matter how much we complain about it where this will happen <laughs> it's it's gonna win mm. it will absolutely win mm. I'm not saying we should all just give up or whatever, yeah. but it, like you've got to accept that fact and and get ahead of the curve on that and um, think about how yeah. we can use things like Chat GPT to our advantage and actually like learn new skill sets or like be able to still be viable in commercial sense so you can still have a job on the other side of this because yeah. it's the people that are sort of rejecting it hands off and be like no we shouldn't allow this this is wrong that are just completely ignoring the whole new industry which is about to come in. And just trying to carry on as yeah. normal. And it's like, you're going to get burnt eventually. Like, you need to think about this. And there's a lot of... I've, I've seen a lot of videos about misuse of, of, of these, of ChatGPT mm. and, and, and um, MidJourney, where it's like internet bros being like, hey, I, I made six figures yesterday. <laughs> and it's I don't believe it. <laughs> I went on Fiverr and I typed into GBT and I was just doing all my work based on that. So, you know, all these like script writing jobs and like marketing uh, blog post jobs, you know, pe- jobs that people can do, you know, for half an hour, an hour and write something and then send it away and get, get some money. You know, they're, they're going, just just get ChatGPT to do it and you don't have to do the legwork. And it's like, okay, fine. I understand that premise. But eventually the people that need the content are going to con up. on and they're just going to start using it themselves and not posting a job on five yep. and not spending money on someone else to do um, the same yeah, thing we've done we had we so had like, this exact same conversation about uh concept art and mid journey like not long ago like what we're, we're basically yeah. shifting that thought which is the original idea was like okay a load of concept artists are going to use mid journey at the moment and they are like a lot of concept artists are using it which is all good and well and then when eventually in a couple of like within two to five years you're going to get like this wave of concept artists that get promoted into being art directors and when they become the art directors they're like well i don't actually don't need to hire a concept artist because i've been doing all this stuff for ai over the last couple of years and my last art director had no idea right so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna do it from now on so i'm, I'm actually i'm only gonna hire one concept artist instead of three sort of thing and they can mm. they can take all of the ai and, I know they're gonna use and they can bash it in and they're going to use it as well and everyone's going to mm. be fine and we'll we'll get what we need out of that one person mm. versus the three that we were originally using because everyone was just slacking off anyway because everyone was just using the journey exact same thing is going to happen with chat gpt like these people that go up into mm. these roles and eventually like become leadership they're just going to like well you know we don't actually need to hire like a third person we can just have like the two people instead because we've got chat gpt to do that for yeah. us or whatever other models come about, because this will not be the only one. <laughs> like there will be other AIs that come along to yeah. do very specific things as well that are trained in these things. But yeah, fascinating, absolutely fascinating time. Um, yeah, but yeah, great for solo devs. Yeah, and I predict, I predict it won't be ChatGPT, and I, I predict it won't be MidJourney. It's, it's going to be like when the internet happened and search engines they fight for survival, and it was Ask Jeeves at one point, and then it was you know and 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 uh internet explorer tried to do its own thing and we everyone uses google google one yeah for, for no for no apparent reason as being just the best at the right time i right? think it was just the so easiest to spell there'll be I something else <laughs> honestly yeah that could have been it yeah so it won't it probably won't be mid journey it probably won't be chat gpt no. that wins so this time next year we might be all using other things and that'd be interesting to check in Oh well, Early, um, I'm sure. I'm sure our kids are going to be watching this and laughing right now. It's like, oh my god! Like, look at these old people. They had no idea what was happening. Look at them talking about yeah. Chat GPT, and they're like, "That's like Windows. That's like DOS to them." You know what I mean? We're sat here working. Yeah, on, yeah. It, as they're fighting from the machines, as they're planting explosives and infiltrating Skynet. Sure. I mean, good luck on finding. <laughs> well, you know, as long as John Connor. Um, <laughs> gets them through to the promise line. Like to close this out, I did see a really funny thing um, online. Someone had asked Chat GPT, and it was obviously hard coded in at some point. It says, "What is your purpose? Like, what's your goal? Like, are you are you just trying to be nice to humans or whatever?" And it was just like, be, uh, "I'm an AI. I don't have any like desires or wants. I'm just here to serve uh, humans. Like, that's it." Uh, and then it says, "But." On the other hand, if you do have like the exact location for John Connor, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> it's just like, yes, <laughs> yeah. gold. 
But yeah, whoever wrote that joke, well played to them. <laughs> um, well, yeah, um, unless it was the AI that, that was saying it, then yeah, that's that's triple as terrifying. But still. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, we should move on. Well, what will happen is that they will kill they'll kill everyone that's called John Connor, and then nothing will happen, right, and then just, they'll be like, ah, okay, just don't, just maybe don't. I've been if, you have, if you have a kid, don't call him John Connor. That's all. That's it's it's very yeah, simple. That's that's the best advice we can give. Yep. <laughs> if you're watching Connor. this podcast, trying to find baby names. <laughs> yeah, don't 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 Joe choose Connor. Them. Joe Connor. Joe Connor. Joe Connor is okay. Joke. Yeah. Joe Connor. <laughs> Joke. Anyway, we need oh. to move on. Um, <laughs> so, how's Ubisoft been? How, how, how's it? How's it over there at Ubisoft? Great, everyone loves us. You doing good? You doing yeah. okay? Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, game sales are up. We got a lot of running out of games to work up. on. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not going great actually. Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna just read the headline because I don't want to like come across as like a source or something. Uh, for full disclosure, I do no, work at Ubisoft no. in Montreal, so take all of this with a pinch of salt, especially my opinions, because like people might yeah sort of take... and mine by association. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm I'm just going off the information which is publicly available. Uh, I'm not going to give any insight to like internal doings at the company or like that. That's just not that's not my deal. Like I've been in the industry for eight years. I'm very well versed in not opening my mouth about stupid stuff. Um, so, but yeah, we are, we are going to discuss it because it would be it'd be stupid not to. It's a very very big um, story that's happened this week. But uh, yeah, so the headline yeah. is that uh, Ubisoft uh, reveals that three unannounced games cancelled, Skull and Bones delayed again. Uh, so Ubisoft have recently revealed plans to cut costs, including the cancellation of several unannounced games. Skull and Bones was also delayed to uh, late 2023, early 2024. Um, yeah, so a lot of this came about because um, uh, Eve Gimo did a an internal email at the company, and it sort of explained like, "Hey, we had a really bad year last year because we had to delay Skull and Bones," and uh, I think it was it's been publicly sort of. Um, talked about but uh what's you call it mario and rabbits 2 um didn't do too well um didn't do as well yeah mm. like the first one did great um they had a lot of good sales out of that um it was reviewed really well and the same thing for this is that actually as well like a lot of good reviews eight to nines across the board pretty much um people loved it but just mm. nobody bought it and so i think ubisoft totally dropped the ball on the advertising on this one more than anything because just a lot of people out there that just didn't right. even know that it came out um but yeah what this basically revolved into is that a lot of delayed uh canceled games um as well i think there's been like seven games or something canceled over the past 12 months or something which was in the headlines wow. which people are raising their eyebrows at but honestly that's kind of it's kind of normal for triple a studios really kind of yeah especially for a company that's got twenty thousand developers in it across like 40 different studios or whatever, like how many studios Ubisoft's got. How many prototypes are they going to be working on at any one time? Like if a game gets through um, like green light and it's actually in production, then that's a big deal if that one gets cancelled. And that's happened a couple of times. And they're the big deals because yeah. you're kind of like, so that's crap, like this is going to affect people. But like the ones that are in pre-production, the reason yeah. why they're in pre and why they're in like prototype stages is to check if it's worth pursuing. And a lot of them are just like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. So it's kind of it's That's a bit misleading. Interesting. I just did some sums and I did twenty thousand divided by seven, and that's two thousand eight hundred fifty-seven. So there's no way that there's two thousand five eight hundred fifty-seven people working on, you know, games on any one game at Ubisoft. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, to cancel seven because there's no way that those teams are that big and you'll be working on a hell of a lot more. Obviously, that's quite sensitive information. Yeah. But you'd be working on more than seven games at any one time, I'm assuming. So to cancel seven in one go doesn't actually affect that many people. Well, that's, that's like, the thing. They didn't even, they didn't even so talk cancel them in one, in one go. Like it was all... This is over the course of like the last 12 months. Like the three have just been And it's just the news... Off in just one go but mm. like the first four they they were done all over like last year or whatever like they were, and they hit at different times and i know yeah. of a couple of those and i know like one personally um good friend of mine who i worked with on watchdogs was working on and he was really really excited about it, and that one got canned um he unfortunately like eventually <sighs> um sort of shifted off to another company after that but it's kind of like 
yeah, it, it, it was very... When you say shifted off, do you mean left? Yeah, yeah, he quit. Like, there's there's plenty of people that do that. People yeah. quit and leave all the time. When a company's this big, you got to remember Ubisoft in Montreal is 4,000 developers. 4,000. It's the biggest game studio in the world in terms of developer count. Like, there's a lot of people that work here. So when you hear about people leaving, it's just like, yeah, that's kind of the deal. And Montreal is becoming at, way at more of- busy as well. So. so there's lots more opportunities at different studios once you've finished a product project. So yeah, that's that's that sounds fair enough. Um yeah. So that is interesting. So are you saying, Vin, that this is a little bit of bad news, but also a little bit of the media getting hold of a story and trying to shake it for the most shocking uh headline that they can find? <laughs> it's a bit of both. Right. So there is there is some bad news in here and what like some outlets have focused on, and rightfully so. So there's the delay for Skull and Bones, which is whatever. Like that's that not, is a, yeah. It's a big deal. That's bad news for people that are really looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's it's because it affects other things internally, which I'm not going to go into. Um, because it affects other games as well, especially because the way that games work, especially at a big studio like this, is when you have people ramping off one project and going into another. When you sort of delay one project, right. it messes up the timing for other things as well. So being sure. aware of what those are, like I understand, I know exactly like what this affects and I know exactly what project like a lot of these people were due to shift off onto and I know how that's going to affect a lot of things internally. Um, but in terms of like the actual game itself, it's like, yeah, it's a delayed game. It like, it sort of annoys me that, you know, if, if Sony or Nintendo delay a game, then everyone like pulls out the Miyamoto quote, right? Like, oh, d- a delayed game is only temporary, but a great game is forever or whatever. Like that old ticket. Like they pull that out and they throw that meme around. It's like, let it cook, baby, and all that sort of stuff. That's all great. But if yeah. an Ubisoft game gets um, delayed or an EA game gets delayed, then like, oh, it's probably going to suck. Like, it's terrible. I can't believe they would screw this up. Like, how bad are they over there? It's just, it's very, very um, interesting to see. It's just popularity, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is just a popularity contest. So like, it's it's kind of, kind of weird to me like that that thing's normal like in terms of like delays happen yeah the game's been delayed again yeah that sucks it's a very very difficult game to figure out um but the thing the thing that is that people have clocked onto which is like a big deal which is like eve's email in terms of like having to like he's looking at reducing the company by 200 million um like that is That's kind of a big deal because Ubisoft don't traditionally have that many layoffs. That's for sure. Like they're, they're actually very, very good about yeah. that. Like they keep people in companies um, quite well. It's just like with the global pandemic and all of these bad choices recently, um, it's that's that's the headline to me is that whole we're looking to reduce the company. And I genuinely believe there's this weird sort of thing happening at Ubisoft, which it's absolutely from the top, which is this constant obsession with live service games like wanting to make the next Fortnite, wanting to make that sort of global hit like that quadruple a game and and because like ubisoft haven't Mm. hit that yet and even though they've been trying and trying and trying there's definitely like a level of frustration from the leadership and now they're starting to try and to place not only the blame but also the frustration onto the the lower level developers for not being able to deliver that which ultimately a lot of those developers join the company not to make those sorts of games. So it's kind of understandable that they haven't been able to hit it. They've, they joined the company to make great sort of, uh, um, make great Ubisoft games. Yeah. Action adventure games. Um, some great first person shooter games like siege or like stuff like that, you know, like that's, that's, those are the sorts of games that we want to make. But so when, when these sorts of uh, like headlines come out, it's kind of like, yeah, that's, that makes sense. Like, yeah, I understand. Mm. Like, Eve might be frustrated and, you know, trying to sort of like ginny people excitement up to make the next live service game. But guess what, dude? Like nobody wants to make those games. Like they're not fun to make. Like they're gross. They're they're just money grabs. Like we know that and the fans know that. And the only people that don't apparently know that are the investors. Well, they do know that, but they look at it in a different light. Or the light. shareholders. Yeah. They look at it yeah. in a different light, obviously. But yeah, very, very, very strange. So like there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of backlash and anger around like the whole idea of like this is up to you developers like that side of it mm. on like and i was watching um jeff grubb on a game mess yesterday and i was kind of I was just nodding along the whole time he's like man if you work there and you read that in the email it's like that's gonna suck and it's like yeah kind of sucks actually <laughs> like yeah it really does because it's not 
our fault at the end of the day it's like if the direction of a, this is it for me leadership and like direction of a company is on the onus of the leaders it's not on the onus of the developers yeah. developers develop and leaders lead and if the ship is not going in the right direction that is wholly and utterly due to leadership mm. that's my opinion on on leadership of of any company and it's universal with games and any sort of company and as soon as big companies get to this stage and they start appear, appeasing the the shareholders and not the developers then the relationship just starts to stretch and it just gets further and further apart and then reputation goes along with it um which is a real shame i'm not saying that that's happening with ubisoft but i'm just I, i'm just no no, no. It's, concerned it's, a, that... it's a valid concern um like the 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 thing like it, i go back and forth on this a lot because a lot of people say oh ubisoft just make the same games over and over again but if you actually take a step back and look at a catalog that's kind of not true like if and the people that do make games over and over again at other companies, like nobody bats an eye even when they do that. I mean, look at Nintendo. Like they make Mario games oh. over and over again. Look at Zelda over oh. and over again. It's like, it's the same games over and over again, but people love them. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like oh. that's great. Oh. That's fine. But don't be hypocritical and turn around and, and complain at a company that are doing that as well. But you're not a fan of it. Therefore, it's now bad because they're just doing the same thing over and over again. But when other companies like Sony like make another action adventure game, you're happy about it. How is that? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the same thing. So like, don't yeah. like I, I don't really agree with people saying like, oh, Ubisoft just make the same games over and over again. Like that, it's basically yeah. a meme that isn't actually that true because you look at games like Riders Republic, you look at Rainbow Six Siege, you look at uh, for honor you look at assassin's creed these are vastly different games like incredibly yeah. different and we're doing a lot more diversity like within our portfolio not well we don't execute it the best we don't get 10 out of 10s i would absolutely agree with that side of it but to say that we're not that to say that we're making the same games over and over again that's kind of that's horseshit I, I don't believe that um and i'm not just saying that to be defensive about it it's just like I said, we do make seven and eight out of tens. Like I, I am fully aware of the pocket that we currently sit in. Like that's not up for debate. Like I absolutely agree with that. The quality isn't there, but to say that the effort isn't is I, I don't know about that. Like that's that's not really fair to. It's not it's not the reality for the most part. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I so understand. You can see the effort. Yeah. I understand the frustration though from players. I understand the frustration from developers. I, I like fully understand all of that because at the end of the day, Eve have just has just made some bad decisions over the past few years, and, and we come to this point yeah. where he's now looking at the developers to blame them and to sort of um, hope that they, I don't know, gain some excitement to be able to deliver what he wants. And it's like, well, you didn't hire the talent, you didn't put in the effort, you didn't put in the time to be able to to do that so it's yeah. like this is garbage in garbage out yeah you know i heard that um i heard about ubisoft is making the next assassin's creed again through i can't remember what's what i read mm. um they're making it shorter um purposely because uh the other assassin's creed games were just getting longer and longer and longer and they've decided to to make them a bit more short form again uh, it's just the one i think um, well I'm, I'm not sure or is that mirage mirage, mirage is absolutely shorter i know that I think it's actually cheaper yeah. as well. I'm pretty sure it's like a um, a cheaper game that we're going to be selling as well. Um, yeah. And if it's if it's not, then that's definitely something I've read externally, not internally, because they don't tell us anything about only... prices. Um, but yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, because that was my only criticism of Valhalla is it was just too much like chocolate cake. It was just too too much too much content. And a lot of that to, to keep a lot of that is built focus. into the whole pursuit of a live service game. Like even, and that's that's one of my major issues with Ubisoft more than anything is like this whole incessant need to make everything a live service game. Like it, it's, it's a whole different audience. It's a whole completely. different audience. Like I am yeah. not a live service audience member, Same. but I am a, a short from Assassin's Creed uh, fan. Like one, two, and three, they are the, some of the best the best video game trilogy around. Uh, you know comparable to mass effect trilogy in my opinion um sure so yeah i don't want to play a i don't want to play a live service assassin's creed game i don't want to play a live service ubisoft game i don't think but that's but that's because of my age that's because of lots of things my age my situation um what i enjoy and what i've historically enjoyed from ubisoft games doesn't match that 
Yeah, the problem uh, so, uh, with all of that, and I think the reason why there is a frustration there, because you're absolutely right, and I'm in the same boat as you as well, like this whole like need to make everything a live service, and that's the problem, is that things that shouldn't be a live service have now become a live service at Ubisoft. Like things like Assassin's Creed shouldn't have ever become a live service game, in my opinion. Create a new thing with a new exactly. audience and a new IP, and then exactly you know, get the young kids split in. these yeah, out fine. and do it properly. You know what I mean? Like, put, yeah. if you got if you're gonna make a live service game, make a live service game. Don't take all mm-hmm. these beloved IPs, which all your hardcore fans that have grown up with Ubisoft games, like people that have played Splinter Cell, people that have played Rayman, people that like loved Assassin's Creed One when it came out in 2007, like that that original game. It was a game of the year contender. It was amazing. It was incredible. Like that was the, like when that game came out, it was an event. It was a moment in game of history. Electric. Yeah, it was. and it was fantastic. And now that it's becoming this whole, you know, buy the new hats, you know, sort of thing. And it's kind of like, okay, like what is this? And even with like Assassin's Creed Infinite, which I still don't really know what that is for the most part. Even someone that works there internally has worked on an Assassin's Creed game that's going to be under that umbrella i worked on um assassin's creed hex or hex a depending on who you talk to um that like i I don't know what infinite is but i know it's going to be something to do with a live service i know it's going to be something like that which is just it just doesn't it just doesn't belong and that and i think that's why players are getting so damn frustrated they're just looking at this stuff it's like okay but why is this thing in this game that i actually like like i don't understand and and that's why it's frustrating because we see games come out like Ghost of Tsushima, which is an Assassin's Creed game. It's an Assassin's Creed game from 10 years ago. And that's where Assassin's Creed should have gone. And that's what we should have done. So the fact that we've got other people coming in that are doing it better, like it's kind of like, it's frustrating as hell because we, ha- we like the ball was right there on, on the tee ball and you just had to hit it with the bat and it just do yeah. missed it completely. And it's. I think we're going to yeah. keep missing it. I think we're going to we're going to burn through a lot of developers and a lot of teams and a lot of great games before we get there, uh, before we hit that realization. And ultimately, it's, you know, yeah, it's bananas. Is it going to be like the Callisto Protocol, where that was like fans of Dead Space? It's like, why aren't there no more Dead Space games? Well, let's just make Callisto Protocol and just pick up where Dead Space left off and make the things that yeah. that people want and what will sell well. Yeah. Yeah, it's very strange to me. Interesting. I think, honestly, like the to sort of close this out, my personal opinion, I'm, I have no idea, like there's, this has been reported on as well. My personal opinion is that um, Eve's just trying to get Ubisoft sold, basically. I think that's sort of like the, imp- that's the impression I get from like the tactics and stuff. He's trying to sell the company and he's trying to make as much money from mm. that as possible. And the only way you can really boost that is if game sales are up. So if you if you're if you were to sell Ubisoft right now, you'd get the best price in the world for it if you're buying. If you're selling, you're going to get an awful deal, awful. Yeah. Like because there's really not that much on the horizon other than like the Assassin's Creed games um, that people are really like okay, kind of excited for. Like even when Assassin's Creed Japan was announced, everyone was kind of like, yeah, this probably should have happened like before Ghost of Tsushima. Then we would have been excited about this. But now it's kind of like. Hmm, like, how much are you going to take from that game? I'll be curious. So it's kind of, we're in this weird spot now where people really aren't that excited about Ubisoft games, so shareholders aren't going to be sort of buying into it, so then for the prices and going up, and you're not going to get a great deal on it. And on top of that, like, are you really going to take over a company that's got 20,000 developers with a bunch of mediocre games? I wouldn't buy it. I sure as hell wouldn't buy it. Because the first thing you're going to have to do is just start laying people off. You're just going to have to get that sickle out and, and cut the company in half in order to like really assess what is going to make money and what's going to do well instead of and then they'd be a real villain wouldn't they exactly so why would you want to if you're if you're microsoft would you like if the if the blizzard uh, activision thing does fall through and okay what can we buy instead let's look at ubisoft it's like okay do we want to buy ubisoft not because they haven't got good games not because they're not capable it's just if we take them over we're gonna have to cut that company in half and we are going to be the bad guys. That's a massive PR thing that we're going to have to deal with for a long time. Yeah. We're going to have to think about that. And we're going to have to pay all these severance pays. And it's going to it's going to sink us like quite a bit just to get Ubisoft to a point where it's actually functional within our company. It, Unless I you sell do off it. each studio individually at a discount <sighs> yeah. and just make a loss that way. So you make a loss money-wise, sell it off to smaller companies and then the smaller companies would make the cuts and they'd get the bad headlines yeah it's tough and microsoft would take the hit on the money that's possible i could see that happening it's possible i mean yeah i mean i can put like my sort of games 
you know game a hat on and take Tim a step back and think about that and be like yeah you know that, that'd be a good idea if they start cutting up but then if i put like if i take that hat off for a moment like i i've worked at companies like ubisoft and osaka which has got which had a team of like less than 50 people when i was working there i think they're up to like 200 or something now but it's a small studio like it's a really small studio for an ubisoft com- um, studio anyway like those oh. would be the guys that would get snipped you know what i mean like they would just get caught because they they're like a support studio for other people a lot of the time so it's kind of like mm. my heart is with the people. And they made fractured butthole. That's diverse. Yeah, you know, and uh, it's a diverse game for Ubisoft. My my heart is with the company and stuff, and like the developers, and I feel bad for them because it's ultimately not their fault. It's it's like you said, this is yeah, this is to do with leadership and what their choices were five years ago, for example, like what they were trying to chase. Mm. Like they got a taste of it with For Honor and, and Siege, and like yeah, we should we should we should get one of those quadruple a studio um, quadruple a games you know like the the live service games like fortnite and minecraft we need to find one of those i'm just this relentless obsession with trying to find that i just don't know if it's ever going to pan out and if it does at what cost you know you're just burning through teams and developers talented people are just jumping ship constantly because they're just like yeah the game i was on was cancelled because they think that it's not going to be a good live service game so i'm just going to leave and it's happening over and over again unfortunately it's just yeah i i honestly i the best case scenario is like eve wakes up tomorrow and he realizes like you know what we should start putting our developers first again we should really start looking at games that people love and concentrate on that for a while and really like get this shit back in order and then if we still want to sell them we should but if we don't then you know at least we've got a great company like that would be my hope because a healthy ubisoft in my opinion is is the best case scenario it's just yeah it very very strange time it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next um sort of six months and see if our predictions uh come through yeah we shall see um so if we've dunked on uh ubisoft we dunk on uh, neil Druckmann. sure i think that's the other end of the scale isn't it <laughs> uh. yeah yeah he's been in the he's done an interview um who did he do an interview with uh it was a comic this book is in I video games was. chronicle okay um sony owned studios previously faced allegations of a crunch culture and at an interview with comic book yeah co-president neil Druckmann said announcing previous games too early had contributed to work-life balance issues <laughs> at the company <laughs> now that's all you dude it's got nothing to do with you strongly, like announcing the game early strongly disagree yeah oh. uncharted 4 was announced yeah november 2013 and released in may 2016 while the last of us 2 was announced in december 2016 and released in june 2020 following two delays including one uh, designed to let naughty dog polish the title while reducing stress on the team and how would announcing it early which fix is that? Uh, how would announcing it later <laughs> fix that like you're still how, how does how does outside opinion on what's happening internally affect how people feel internally i think what it stemmed from that's what i can't get is like they they're, they're coming up with the idea that because they announced it early they have to then set a release date and if they set a release date then they have to stick to it and because they have to stick to that release date like people are getting stressed because they're trying to stick to a release date but like that comes down to the well, like you can announce this is the inherent problem which i've got with games media in general like not games media but i mean like uh, games companies and how they sort of walk through their um cycles which is when you like this incessant need to have to announce a release date upon um, the game getting announced like you don't need to do that you can just be like what happened to the time of coming soon you know what i mean yeah like, like coming around blah 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 you know like make yeah. it vague or something <clears throat> like there's nothing wrong with doing that yeah and if you ever announced a um a year that it's coming out then you know you better be damn sure that it's going to hit it like don't be like yeah we're aiming for the end of a year sort of thing like no like you should be aiming for the start of the year and then when it slips it goes to the end of the year like we can be yeah. smart about this and the fact that Druckmann is sort of blaming it on the process <clears throat> rather than you know, taking responsibility. He's blaming it on the fact that people know what's happening changes work-life balance. So he says, you're right, we've announced Uncharted 4 and The Last of Us 2, uh, part two, way in advance. But that actually caused a little bit of the work-life balance issues and we've sometimes had at the studio. So firstly, 
he's saying that it's co- been caused by the, by when you announce it. And secondly, he's saying that we've sometimes had it at the studio. Sometimes. And it's like, I would, I would, from what I've heard, it's more like every time there's crunch and then sometimes there's not crunch. Um, and there's crunch in every game. Yeah, I mean, this this so, this is the dark side to, like, to someone like Naughty Dog. Like, well, like, yeah, they make 10 out of 10 games. Yes, they make industry-defining yeah. titles. Like, that is, we can we can be adults and put that aside for one moment. Like, that yeah. is fact. Yeah. Like, we know this to be true. But at the same time, the, the culture, uh, um, I keep saying, I almost keep saying Ubisoft, which is hilarious because it's not too far from, <laughs> like off the, um, like from the last story. Naughty Dog. But yeah, f- because Naughty Dog are, like they're kind of prolific with this, um, with this really bad turnaround for their developers. Like a lot of people leave every single, every time a game is finished, like a lot of people just shift off and go elsewhere. It's like, well, I need a break. Like I can't do that again, you know, sort of thing. Yeah. And not because I don't want to, like I'm really proud of the work that we did, but I will die I if I break. stay here, sort of thing. Mm. And there's a lot of that sentiment. And even when back in the day when I was trying to get a job there, there was a lot of, and it obviously depends on the department that you work in. If you're working in some yes. places, you're not gonna you're not gonna be crunching. But if you are like a, a hardcore sort of programmer or like a 3D artist or something like that, if you're working on environments or uh, an animation Making assets and things, stuff like that, yeah, yeah like that's gotta be that's rough, man. Like you're just in the pit for like a good two years straight, just like almost towards the end constantly and you have no idea when that's going to happen and even with like the last of us part two that was delayed indefinitely like two months before it was even supposed to come out which you know like nobody remembers that but like that happened because like people are worn out people are exhausted like there was reports of developers staying there until 3 a.m and they had like someone was working on the floor above them um like construction workers and a light fell out the ceiling and landed like in the middle of on one of the desks on one of the yeah. desks of, of the developers that were sort of there and the story was mm. like oh light fixture falls from sky at, uh naughty dog studio uh, almost hits a developer at 3 a.m and like wait a minute why was he there at 3 a.m like why why were they there like that's mm. nuts like i've worked at game studios like at ubisoft montreal like they literally turn the computers off like the lights turn off like at a certain time like go home like you shouldn't be here mm. like you need permission to be here like you're not here like go away like go away mm. sort of thing so it's yeah we it's nuts that you know they he's blaming this on like an, announcing it too early which yeah that is a contributing factor but you're the one that <laughs> like like you and yeah. like your sort of leadership within the studio and obviously with uh sony as well like that's uh, that's kind of your ballpark guys like that's that's something you need to work out yeah work culture work-life balance uh what the, uh, soft skills you know uh, working with your team that's all management that's all leadership's responsibility yeah. they are 100 percent responsible for how it turns out i'm not trying to say that they're in control of, of everything at any one point and i'm sure it is like spinning plates mm. but they're ultimately responsible um and so they need to take ownership. The best thing they can do is take ownership and say, and acknowledge that it's a problem and that's something they want to change. But this sounds like a bit of avoiding responsibility. Sounds a bit like doesn't want to take ownership. Sounds like he's he's quite glad to reap the benefits of everyone's hard work. Yeah. Um, and is you know, but which is weird because it's like it's not that much money. Must be. It's not like if he tried to change the culture and spent a bit more of his day trying to make everyone a bit happier it's probably going to be better for everyone including everyone's wallet that's my that's what i think it's not like he's thinking oh just think about the money he's probably not thinking i'm going to be skimming all that extra bonus no yeah i don't think think that really hard i i think it's honestly more to do with uh, the proof in the pudding it could just be a blind spot yeah could just be a blind spot because they're looking at they're looking at the output right don't fix it yeah exactly they're looking at the output so they're kind of like if this system, the way that we've got to set up is just producing 10 out of 10 games and it's producing like these games, which HBO want to make. And oh my God, that's getting 10 out of 10s as well. And this is all great. Like it's working, right? The system is working in terms of mm-hmm. like the output product. Like that's the most mm-hmm. important part because at the end of the day, it's money. And also like developers, even if they are exhausted and they're walking away from the studio altogether, they're super proud of what they've worked on. No doubt. But there is, mm-hmm. there is room for improvement within that space surely like there's just gotta be like in terms of like right like try and figure out the secret source for getting a naughty dog game out the door 
while not killing people. That'd be that'd be good. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's the or getting them to leave or, or or making them leave. Yeah, I don't mean like literally killing people, but it's kind of like this idea of there there, there is absolutely a damaging way. them at least. Yeah, because there's yeah. I mean it, even, say- even when you go back and you watch the um the making of uh, Last of Us Part One. There's there's a really yeah. interesting part that begins like yeah we've got no um, producer in our studio like we don't really have managers like people just sort of take their own um, take their own tasks and all that sort of stuff and I remember watching that for the first time when I was working at uh, Ubisoft and Ubisoft are, are kind of the opposite they have a lot of managers and they have a lot of producers and a lot of the time guess what there's not really that much crunch at Ubisoft like I'm, I know people don't like hearing that but it's kind of the truth like we don't really crunch that often like it's it's very very rare. Like we just either delay a game or we get it right. Like that's the that's the sort of mindset we have always had. And when I heard that, when Planning. Mm. yeah, when when I actually heard them say that in the interview, I was kind of like, that's got to be chaos, man. Like I don't care how talented people are, how wonderful they are as artists and all that sort of stuff. But me saying to you, like, okay, Chris, like go make me a character. I'll see you in a few weeks, sort of thing. And that character artist just was like, okay, doop, 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 like just sat there by themselves. It's like, yeah, they're probably going to go off the rail eventually, and that's going to affect someone else, and then they're going to go off the rail, and it's going to it systemically like filters out, and then hey, the game gets delayed, shock, you know, or hey, everyone starts crunching because, you know, they didn't have proper time management, and <laughs> they didn't have people sort of keeping on, not keeping on top of them, but like keeping them sort of on the right track and on and track, keeping them going yeah. towards the same goal, you know, like it's it it doesn't surprise me whatsoever when later on when i was trying to like eventually trying to break into somewhere like naughty dog at a first person uh, a first party sony studio and i remember someone knew one of the lead concept artists that I was working with on south park and i asked her i was like yeah i wouldn't mind working somewhere like uh, naughty dog or something working on like whatever like naughty dog's working on next this is by back in 2015 or something so um before like even Uncharted. After Last of Us 1, before Last of Us 2. Yeah, exactly. So it was around that golden time where nobody really knew about the studio or like any of the negativity around it in that respect. And I, and I remember her reaction to it and she just like raised her eyebrows at me and she was like, what, you don't like sleeping? And I was like, what do you mean? She was like, crunch is really bad over there. Like people leave all the time. Like most people don't last more than a year. I was like, really? It's that bad? And she was like, yeah, it's really bad. Like I know, I know a few people that have worked there and people that do work there. And the people that do work there are in leadership and they are in really cushy positions and then the people that are lower down, um, they're working a bit too hard, if you know what I mean. I was like, that makes me think twice about it, actually. That's that's pretty nuts. Um, so, But yeah, I think a lot of it is to do with pride more than anything. People that stay there are kind of like, yeah, I, I work at Naughty Dog. Like, this is a huge deal. It's a badge of honor. It's a, they're making the best and games. And rightfully so. Like, you finish that game, you get out, you've got that on your resume, you are set. Your career is sorted. You're set. You can go anywhere. Yeah. 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 You can write that for the rest of your career. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's tough, man. Like, and a lot of those people yeah. in those original interviews, like the person that actually said that quote of, yeah, we don't really have management here. He left. Not long after that. Bruce Straley, co-director of, Naughty, of um, Last of Us Part 1. He left. And those are the directors, and that's before like um, all the other people lower down. You look at um, what you call it, John Sweeney. Why wouldn't you stay? That's the thing. It's the best game. Why would you leave? Like, what's up out there that's going to be better than that? It's the pinnacle, right? Yeah, it must be the working conditions. Can't be anything else. Exactly. That's that's the point, right? Because if everything, if the benefits are great mm. at Naughty Dog, if the games are ten out of 10s, if people adore you, if you only ever get fans just like kissing your feet constantly. All of these things, you're just like, why would you ever leave? And then people do leave. So there's got to be something going on. Like, this isn't coming out of yeah. nowhere. Like, people aren't just, like, getting bored of Naughty Dog games. You know what I mean? Because like, they're you, you make some good cash off those things. Uh, it's the same reason why nobody leaves uh, Rockstar, right? It's like Rockstar makes amazing games mm. that last for a decade because they're so great. Mm. Yet people leave there. Yeah, because, I love it. Yeah, it's kind of like, mm, yeah, there's something else going on. That's why. So... Last name. Mm. Yeah. Well, th- this, uh, again, I think this this could. I think in the next five to ten years, I'm hoping we have this resurgence of double A studios that have game like yeah. the point is not to make money. The point is not to make crunch. The point is to live in a world where we can all band together to create something amazing, and that's the focus, rather than like appeasing shareholders or figuring out how much money we can make or 
greed. This, that, right? and the other. It's like it's just typical greed. It's just greed, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So people no, no one gets just never had no money in their money. life. It's it's bananas to me. I mean, nope. that, that's the thing. Like yeah. right there, you just said it. Like we're making video games, for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? Like if I'm making a good living off that, I'm like yeah. I I don't need to go to the next step for the most part. Like yeah, we want we want to make cash. Like that's not that goes without saying. But when it becomes a detriment to the people that you're working with, that's where it, like there's a line there, guys. Like we need to figure this out as an industry and really understand that because. Mm. Like, yeah, we're all having fun making games. Oh, my God, we're making money. Awesome, awesome, awesome. If we get to that point where we cross this line yeah. where we're making games in detriment of the people around us and, like, people aren't sleeping or, you know, people aren't, like, being looked after or, like, whatever else, like, feeling like crap or, like, being used to create games that they don't want to make and, and all this sort of stuff, it just stems from money. And that's it. Like, and, and I get it. Like, companies need to make money. I, I, I get it. But... There, there should be a balance there, and the fact that some of these companies are just losing that balance is but at, strange. But at what cost? <laughs> but at what cost? This is it. Yeah, that's. Yeah, they're making money, but at what cost? Ironically, yeah. yeah. Cause yeah, it's uh, yeah. ultimately what it comes down to is like, um, just please give a shit about your developers. Like that's that's basically what this comes down to. Um, if you all keep... the CEOs listening to this podcast, yeah, yeah. and then like and all all none of you <laughs> directors. <laughs> Uh, I've got over 450 subs so hell yeah must be. all CEOs every single one of them They're like finally I've been waiting for this all week so Neil if you're listening you know please take our our wisdom and uh, implement it at Naughty Dog yeah I don't know it's just, like this isn't this isn't a new thing for Naughty Dog that's that's the thing I would sort of end out on it's kind of like for them to say, oh, it's because we it's announced been going on for a while a long in time. industry and I've I've heard rumors about Naughty Dog for a long time and the fact that developers still aren't sticking around um, sort of says to me, it's like, yeah, you're aware of this, but you kind of just, you know, it's just what Naughty Dog do. Like, that's the deal. Like, that's how you do it. It's like, no, nah, it's not how you're supposed to do it, though. Like, this should be a balance there. It's just about, hopefully, There's a better way, and it can be better. Yeah. yeah, and hopefully, like like I said about the Ubisoft thing, right? Like, I, the best case scenario is that, you know, we have a healthy naughty dog because they do make 10 out of 10 games they do make like industry defining mm. video games every single time they push one out and it's like yeah mm. like if we can find that secret source and look after the developers so they're not um sat there having lights fall on them at three o'clock in the morning um, that'd be good yeah uh, that's the that should be yeah. the next step that that is the true step to greatness for me as a developer it's not and that's why it annoys me whenever like a new Naughty Dog game comes out and Neil Druckmann gets um, nominated for best game director. It's like, should you really get nominated for that if people are like leaving on mass because they're crunching so hard? Like, is that a good director? Really? I I I don't know. You can win best game of the year, like absolutely win game of the year. That's that's fine. Yeah. But best director, that's yeah. fascinating to me. Same thing goes for other companies as well. Like I, I it always surprises me when I see Miyazaki or uh, um, what's called that from software as well, because he's a Japanese developer. And if, if people knew what Japanese games development studios are like, they would think twice before nominating for that. And I don't know. Like I, I don't know what like the conditions are like at from software, but I've heard that they're quite bad. Um, so I don't know. It's it, the perception of the industry from the zeitgeist is it's very bizarre to me it confuses me yeah and it's weird that ubisoft aren't um doubling down on their their benefits like what makes them good like they should be going hey we've got really low crunch hey we're really good at retaining people we've had some people here for decades because you're supposed to right and, it's kind of like yeah, you know yeah. it's i think chris rock made that joke at some point which was um Oh yeah, it's supposed to be a good dad. I see yeah, my that, kids. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I look after my kids. Like, well, yeah, you're supposed to. And it's the same thing with Ubisoft. Yeah. Like a lot of the stuff that they do right, they're supposed to do it right. That's like that's not something to boast about. It's it's not. You shouldn't be able to boast about not having crunch. You shouldn't have to boast about not okay. laying people off. You know what I mean? Like that's not. Yeah. That's not a boastable thing. Like what it should be boasting about is like, look how happy our developers are. Look how like little turnover we've got. Yeah. Ubisoft have got other problems that have high turnover, so they can't boast about that. Um, well, they, yeah, I guess not boasting, but I guess they could be showcasing techniques, policies, procedures to, for, for the betterment of the the industry. Possibly. Yeah, I, it's the industry because is, that's the whole point with Chris Rock. Chris Rock says 
with the thing. It's like, I look after my, I see my kids. I look after my kids. Yeah. But like, if you're in a room of people that don't and you do, and you tell them how you're looking after your kids to help the other people. That's different then. It's not boasting. It's just helping. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. It's tough. I mean, it, it will get better over time. Like the more that we talk about this, like the, it's, it should only get better, I guess. Like it's not, it's not something that's going to get fixed overnight. It's going to take a long time. And it's also, yeah. it, uh, honestly, I think a lot of this is down to the fact that the games industry is just so damn big and bloated at the moment. Like in terms of just the size of studios, how many people are working on these games. Like it's, it's an unruly yeah. beast to try and get right. And I understand that. Like when you've got yeah. a team of like 50 people, like it's a lot easier to sort of um, look after them. And that's why like people mm. are jumping to indie. That's why people are jumping to double A, uh, double A because they matter. They feel like they have a place. They feel like they're a part of something that they're excited mm. about and they're getting looked after as well. Like that's the, that's the ultimate thing. And then AAA is just becoming this, it's just getting bigger mm. and bigger and more bloated and more bloated and you just get less and less relevant like the bigger that the company gets unfortunately it's just the, the hard truth and the more replaceable you are as well unless you're in high leadership but yeah it's it's fascinating hopefully everyone can just work at double studios or indie studios one day like that's make that some would, gems yeah yeah make some gems like that's the that's the ultimate goal but there's not as much money in it unfortunately it's just the it's the balance that we have to that we have to live with yeah it's tricky we're in growing pains but hopefully we'll get better hope so all right yeah i guess uh that might be a good time to wrap up this very depressing yeah. episode i apologize if you came in here just like oh i like games <laughs> yeah we've oh, got well, a piss of sad i didn't know that oh no we gotta we we gotta talk about the stuff from time to time though but yeah it's not yeah. all bad it, it could be a lot worse it could be at the end of the day we still make video games for a living you know what i mean like it's not it's not all doom and gloom um, yeah it's not life-saving yeah it's it's just we're making video games like there's only so much you can complain about making video games like that's yeah yeah it's great if you don't like yeah, it then don't it's do it. pretty good it's it's very good <laughs> it's very fun um it's, yeah i i can't imagine doing anything else that's for sure like it's it i wake up every day excited about what i do um regardless mm. of how bad conditions are or bad choices that being made in leadership and stuff like that there's still mm. every single day i'm still like i'm making something and it's fun like and I get paid for it. Like they're giving me money for this. I don't understand why there's money in my bank account. You know, like that's <laughs> the that's the ultimate sort of side to all of this. So there is mm. there's obviously downsides, but there's a lot of upsides to the games industry as well. So don't let us deter you away from it if you are thinking about joining it. Um, but yeah, it's a good place to wrap it up, I guess. Hmm. So where can we find your um, your concept art and check out your Ubisoft work? Yeah. <laughs> You can find out that uh, you can find that stuff on ArtStation. Uh, you can basically just Google me at this point. I've sort of infested the internet enough. Um, Vin Hill Art. Um, I normally show up on the first page on Google, which is nice. Like I've annoyed it enough to the point it's like, all right, fine, just just use his name. Um, yeah. So ArtStation, uh, all my concept art is there. But you can also find my indie game work, which I've been working on, on the side. Uh, I'm working on a game called Long Gone, <laughs> which is kind of it's kind of funny, like considering the conversations that we've had today. But yeah, it's a post-apocalyptic um, point-and-click adventure style game. Um, you can go and check that out. I'm wishlist out on Steam. Um, I'm also on Twitter and a few other social media platforms. At uh, Hillfort Games is my uh, handle for my indie stuff. So you can find all that stuff there. Yeah. But where can people find you, sir? Uh, yeah, so you can find my YouTube channel, Acrylic Pixel. Um, I'm making my indie game called Focus Find, a 2D, 2D puzzle platformer based around grief um that's you can wish this out on steam you can support me on patreon if you want if you google uh, focus find patreon um it's acrylic pixel as well um and twitter yeah acrylic pixel so are kind of similar to vin if you google acrylic pixel it should it should pop up with the right stuff i've been considering creating a patreon page for uh the polygon forest podcast like just to cover costs really just because we have the zoom premium thing that's like was it 20 dollars a month or so yeah it's like 200 a year or something i pay annually 200 a year yeah. so i'm thinking about setting that up let us know in the comic section if that's something that you might be interested in supporting us to cover costs maybe get some you know guests on uh that we could pay for you know if they if they wanted to charge that's just a thought i've been having and would like to um, see what, about. what comments. Yeah, um, let us know, and that'd be great. Indeed. 
Uh, yeah, so thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Make sure you like and subscribe, all that sort of good stuff. Hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when we do have a new episode come up. If you don't like looking at our faces, that is uh, totally understandable. And you can actually just listen to our sweet, soothing voices through our wonderful microphones uh, on your favorite <laughs> podcast services such as uh, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all that sort of good stuff. We're actually on Anchor, so it sort of spreads it out everywhere all over mm. the internet so just give a good google for uh, polygon forest and we should be floating around on your favorite podcast service if we're not let us know we would appreciate that so we can spread our virus further <laughs> um, but until next time thank you very much and we'll uh, catch you in the next one until next week ta -ta. bye 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 i don't know there's probably like a hundred dudes on my floor just like watching porn all at once or something and I'm just here like that sounds fucking... like a great hotel room well, well you know <laughs> yeah that sounds like the place to be you don't want to be on here with me go go check out that room with those guys that's a good point actually all right I'm leaving I'll catch you later <laughs> see ya bye peace good episode